The following is a selected video from MasterTheContent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit MasterTheContent.com. Your career, our passion. Advantage. Mechanical advantage, let's begin here with a definition. Mechanical advantage is a process where a mechanical device such as a lever, gear, pulley, wedge, or screw can be used to redistribute the amount of force and distance that go into performing a particular amount of mechanical work. Mathematically, mechanical advantage is as such, where you have the force applied by the machine to overcome the resistance, right, divided by the effort force, uh, the force applied to a machine. So basically mechanical advantage, you have the machine where it just uh, multiplies the effort force, right? Wonderful. So now two more points before we move on to our next slide. The amount of energy transferred by a machine to the object cannot be greater than the amount of energy transferred to the machine. And that makes sense, right? Intuitively. Great. And a portion of the energy transferred is lost to friction and changed into heat energy. Now. The problems that we'll be working with on this lecture, we're, we'll be working with the following circumstances. And what I mean by that is, in ideal mechanical advantage, none of the work input is lost to friction and changed into heat energy, meaning the input work is going to be equivalent to the output work. Okay, great. Let's now move on to our next slide. And we'll take a look now at mechanical advantage and levers. Now. Just for a moment, just forget what it says here on the slide and let's just be, make ourselves comfortable once again with the components of a lever. The, a lever is going to have three components, right? It's gonna have its pivot point, it's gonna have the force, and it's also gonna have the resistance. And that's what we see for resistance, pivot point, force, and all three levers. Wonderful. So now let's just take a moment and come back to, uh, to mechanical advantage of a lever. Now, we know that the mechanical advantage of a lever is just the force applied by the machine to overcome the resistance, right? Divided by the effort force, or the force applied to a machine. And that is going to be equivalent to D subscript two over D subscript one. And what that is, is D two is gonna be the distance of that effort force, right? Relative to the pivot point divided by the distance of uh, the resistance relative to the pivot point. And we're gonna see that in all the scenarios in all classes of levers down here. Okay, great. Now, figure 5.8, let's just do one, uh, one, other part of, one other portion of review that we're gonna need to solve the upcoming questions. Now, firstly, we should note, whenever you have a first class lever, right? You're all, the first class lever is dis distinguished by having the pivot point, so the pivot point between the resistance, as you see here, the resistance, and the force, firstly. Now, in regards to first class levers and mechanical advantage, uh, mechanical advantage for a first class lever can be greater than or less than one. And what I mean by that is, depending on the distance of the resistance and the force from the pivot point, right? So say we had a scenario where the resistance was very close to the pivot point, right? So the resistance here is very close to the pivot point and the force is far, far farther from the pivot point. So therefore, D2 would be greater than D1, right? And if D2 is greater than D1, let's go back up to our equation. If D2 is gonna be greater than D1, then we're gonna have a significant mechanical advantage, right? Now let's take a look at second class levers. With second class levers, Firstly, how do you distinguish a second class lever from the other two classes of levers? Well, you can do so because second class levers have the resistance between the pivot point and the force. Firstly, now, in regards to mechanical advantage, because, since we have the resistance as between the pivot point and the force, we know that D2, right, D2 is going to be larger than D1, meaning that the force is gonna be farther from the pivot point than the resistance. Thus, if D2 is larger than D1, so coming back up to our equation, if D2 is larger than D1, then we know for a second, then we know that the mechanical advantage is gonna be greater than one for second class levers, for second class levers. Now, in contrast to second class levers, if we take a look at third class levers, actually first let's distinguish third class levers from a second and first class lever. 
they have the force that's actually between right the resistance and the pivot point for third class levers now since the resistance is going to be the resistance is going to be farther from the pivot point right as you see here than the force then d1 is going to be larger than d2 and if d going back up to our equation if d1 is larger than d2 then we know that the mechanical advantage the mechanical advantage for third class levers for third class levers is going to be less than 1 okay great now let's actually move on to our to our next slide wonderful 